senior year in college and I had a friend that um, I noticed was walking around campus carrying a Bible and that would have, was very uncharacteristic for this guy and um, ran into him and just simply asked like, what, what happened to you? there. Welcome to the <clears throat> No Greater Joy podcast brought to you by the pastors here at Grace Baptist Church because we want for our people, but uh, what Jesus wants for his people, and that's to no greater joy. And uh, we're confident that there is no greater joy for God's people when they step into the areas that bring no greater joy. That's being a 24-7 worshiper, a go person, and an alongsider. I am Pastor Steve Strong, lead pastor here at Grace. Sitting across from me is... Ryan Atkins, the associate pastor here at Grace. And then a huge thanks once again to our tech genius, Dan Kraniak, a member here at Grace. Thanks, Dan. producer for this podcast. So we have been recording some kind of bonus episodes that we've called. Uh, they highlight the work that God's doing in the lives of our people here at Grace. Uh, specifically, really providing them an opportunity to share... Uh, what they're what we're calling their gospel collision story, or more commonly known as their salvation story, and so we have a wonderful guest with us today, ready to share his testimony. Tom Halstead, thanks for joining us today, Tom. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, why don't you just take a minute, introduce yourself, take a few seconds, and give us maybe the the Cliff Notes version of an introduction to to Tom Halstead. Well, I'm married. <clears throat> I have two daughters. I'm originally from uh, Charleston, West Virginia, and I've been married 30... Oh boy. Get it right, Tom. Uh-oh. Let's see. 30, 32 years, 33 years, Congrats, and uh, we live in Rocky River, Ohio, and I'm employed by NASA. Nice. What do you do at NASA? I work for the chief financial officer, and I'm a budget analyst. So you keep NASA solvent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been at NASA? Um, 1988. All right. I've been out there since 1988. Wow. Very good. You're the veteran there. <clears throat> Actually close to retirement now. How close? Potentially January of uh, next year. Wow. 2024. So, <clears throat> seniors in high school have senioritis. Do you have retirement-itis? Uh, well, I'll put it this way. I'm... More looking forward to it than my my wife's a little more anxious about it than I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is she going to do with Tom around all day? Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, great, Tom. So so glad to have you. Um, can you just share with us, uh, you know, just your story when you came to put your faith in Christ for salvation and uh, just just a brief version of that. Well, a brief version was um, it was my senior year in college and I had a friend that um, I noticed was walking around campus carrying a Bible and that would have, was very uncharacteristic for this guy and um, ran into him and just simply asked like, what, what happened to you and it wasn't like um, you know, someone smoked and quit smoking or maybe drank and quit drinking. He seemed to be like a completely different person. So he shared with me how he, um, that someone shared their faith with him, how he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. And then all of a sudden he just asked, you know, if if you were to die today, would you um, go to heaven or hell? And that was, you know, that direct approach probably wouldn't work with m most, but it did with me. I just, I knew right at that point I needed to to make a change. So that was uh, almost 40 years ago now. Uh, well, what school was that? University of Dayton. Okay. So you just saw this guy carrying a Bible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew him, and like I mentioned, it was it would have been very uncharacteristic for him to be, uh, you know, walking around campus carrying a Bible. Mm -hmm. So what were, uh, 
what was kind of characteristic of you? What was your life like leading up to that moment in college? Did, was your family religious at all? or? Um, we went to church at that point. We kind of, we went to church really to appease mom, but we all went. It was, um, really like a fire and brimstone type church in the South. So, um, at that point, if someone would have asked me, you know, do you really believe, you know, Jonah was small, swallowed by a large fish and survived, I'd have said yes. If someone would have asked, did, did I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, I also would have said yes. So I never like really questioned the veracity of any of the, of the scriptures. I, I would describe myself as um, convinced but uncommitted mm-hmm. up until that point. So I always th- thought that I knew I needed to make a commitment and change. And um, that was really just the turning point for me when I got was asked that question. You're, <clears throat> you have brothers and sisters. And... I'm the oldest of uh, three. So um, since then, my brother and sister have come to know Christ, and my dad made a recommitment and actually was rebaptized. Mm-hmm. So a lot of Lord's been really good to us. Who are the, um, you know, that moment there with, uh, with this guy down in Dayton? Mm-hmm. What were there any other kind of circumstances that God was using, or people that He was using to kind of prepare you for that, or even um, right there on the campus at that moment? Were there any other key individuals that God used? Um. Up, what led up to that? There was a, a couple of times where someone attempted, or actually did talk to me about their faith. Um, uh, there was a summer leading up to that. I was with, at the beach with um, a few of my buddies, and there was a, they were um, I think they were fellowship of. Christian athletes group or maybe Campus Crusade for Christ group, but they, we were on the beach and someone walked up and, you know, asked if they could talk to me about, you know, spiritual things. Um, I was sitting in the library and believe it or not, and someone asked uh, if they could, like, share the four spiritual laws. This is this was at college, so that was two two things sort of stuck out. But um, you know, I went back home from school. You know, we did attend church. So uh, the church we attended, you heard the the gospel message like the end of every sermon. You know, the pastor always had like a sermon title, but every sermon ended the same way, and that was Jesus dying on the cross. You need to make a decision. So, so what was it? So you, so you, you grew up going to church. Were you there regularly as a family? Mm-hmm. So, but and you said you were going for mom. What? And so every week you're hearing the gospel, you're hearing mm-hmm. the preaching. Like, what was it about this this young guy, the change in his life? What was it that, like that moment, something changed um, for Tom? What like? I guess I was coming into my, it was basically the last semester of my senior year. And I think the uncertainty of, of the future, um, the, uh, you know, that, that feeling that something was missing and, um, probably a combination of those things. Just my heart was right to, to hear that message and, and you're thinking back now when we were uh, going to church, um, my brother and I used to joke that that the, at the end of uh, every sermon, you know, we heard this, you, know, you need to make a decision. And it was sort of like um, being in a boxing match, and that was like the, 
the pastor's you know, roundhouse punch at the end of every sermon. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes we come out of church and actually say, you know, wow, we survived the round. So, um, yeah, I heard the message growing up, and you know, my grandmother was a Christian, Sunday school teacher. My grandfather was a Christian. So, do you think the people there, <clears throat> as a part of that congregation, would have thought of you, oh, Tommy Halstead, yeah, he's a good kid, he's a Christian, we're pretty sure, or... You know, I don't know, that's a good question. Um, probably it, those who really were closest to me would probably know that I wasn't, but... Um, I guess I wasn't as bad as I could have been. <laughs> like, I think it probably did modify my behavior some yeah but um well i think it just it it kind of reinforces that you know we talk about the the people who are even now attending grace and they're here they're involved in going off to school you know don't ever assume but also don't ever give up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's God's timing is different for different people. And, you know, we continue to be praying for our college students, continue to pray for our students, continue to pray, you know, even those that are regularly attending, you know, they need to hear the gospel yes. and they need to hear it often because we just don't know when God may break through and open those eyes and uh, it may be something as simple as, wow, that kid's carrying a Bible. That's kind of weird. I wonder why that is. Mm -hmm. And then now you're directly confronted by a peer of, where are you going when you die? I think that's a, that's a, that's a powerful testimony. That's cool. I mm -hmm. think that's good. It's a good reminder. So, so Tom, you had the, like the, I'll call it the solid foundation of your upbringing and, you know, your presence in church and stuff growing up. Um, were there any specific passages or verses that God used to bring you to Christ? I wouldn't say, I'd say no, the no, no specific uh, um, passage, just the, just the recognition that, um, that I was a sinner and needed to be, needed to be saved. Amen. What are, what's been, <clears throat> since that time, what have been some scripture passages that have been um, important to you, formative for you, something that you cling to often. I like um, I like Proverbs, and I like specifically the second chapter of Proverbs. It talks about pursuing uh, wisdom, mm -hmm. and um, so I do. I do a lot of uh, Bible reading. I like to. I'm always encouraged by reading about how the the Bible and science kind of fit hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, even recently read a philosophy book, a Christian mm -hmm. by a Christian philosopher. See so, you know, um, you know, even even philosophy and, and the and theism fit together. Um, I really enjoy uh, reading um, about uh, you know Middle East archaeology how that fits with the scripture so just pursuing um pursuing wisdom and i've got a long way to go mm -hmm. but uh, i've come to really just love and enjoy um, um reading my bible and reading books about the bible yep yep do you have a favorite like if there was one book besides the bible you were going to hand to someone and say you need to read this do you have that book in mind um I guess I would I would go with uh, John or Romans, but I really enjoy um, uh, Isaiah from the Old Testament and. Um, or what about outside of the scriptures that you've been reading? Um, I just read a um, the the book about the philosophy book was called Believing Philosophy. I just read that. Um, I'm actually now reading a commentary on Leviticus by Wearsby. Um, I read um, 
a book by John Lennox. It's uh, the title is Can Science Tell Us Everything or something like that. Um, I actually can't think of some of the others. All right. That's good. Keep mm-hmm. reading. Yeah. Yeah. Jumping into Leviticus. Well done. Yeah. Day for the day for Tom Olson. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Tom, how many years ago was that when you trusted Christ? I think you had mentioned yeah, it was, 30 it some was years. actually closer to 40. 40 it was years. like 1983. So, what, uh, I almost exaggerated exactly 40 years. So, what uh, the biggest difference that Christ has made in your life, the before Christ, after Christ? Well, I guess those that are closest to me could probably um, answer that better, but I'd say a little bit more at peace, a little more direction. Um, sort of confidence of the of the future mm-hmm. and where I will spend eternity. Yep. We'll do it together. We'll do it together. <laughs> Very good. And so, Tom, kind of one last question. Um, just share with us how God's working in your life today. Um, you know, today it seems like... Um, my focus is like really narrowed um, as we sort of look at world events and things that are going around. I just recognize that um, you know we're coming toward the end, as Steve sometimes mentions. We're one day closer to spending eternity with the Lord, mm-hmm. and um, just what I consider important now is kind of narrowed and um, you know, try and take advantage of the, the time I have left and and um, you know hoping to, to finish well yeah so Tom you came to Christ in college this is not this is not a question that we put on the list for you to answer mm-hmm. but uh, for we have a bunch <clears throat> of college students what would be your advice to them? as they're starting out their school year and how God changed your life in the midst of college? I would um, encourage our students to to find a group of believers on campus um, and find a church nearby and plug in. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things I, if I had to do it again, that's what I would have done. Very good. Duly noted. Jacob, if you're listening, find a good church. All right. Well, Tom, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing. And uh, we need to keep praying for our students. Keep praying for those that uh, are here every Sunday. And uh, and uh, I think that's a good reminder to keep, keep the gospel in front of people and trust that the Lord will bring them to Christ and, and his good time. So thanks for spending the time with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Until the next podcast, talk to you later.